Hey everybody, it's Lissa. Welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing a video I was actually not planning on making because I just don't feel like it is really needed, but I keep getting comments over and over and over again asking for me to update you guys on my animals. And I get it. I make these huge vlogs where I go and get my pets and then I don't update you guys other than posting on my Instagram stories. So I get that you guys want to see them, but I just want to say, quick disclaimer real fast, I am not a pet tuber. I do make a bunch of different types of videos on my channel, but I am not solely a pet tuber. I don't make content on my animals. I like to vlog getting them and that's pretty much it. So that is why I have not updated you guys on the animals that I have gotten in the past couple months. As you can probably hear them squeaking in the background, yes, my guinea pigs are alive. They are fine. They are doing great and they're healthy. And then I guess in this video, I am going to be showing you guys how I clean my bearded dragon enclosure because a lot of you guys have asked for updates on Bowser. He's like pancaked out on the Super Mario question block and I'm going to show you him in a second, but I just wanted to say real fast and I hope Hope this doesn't come out rude or anything, but I get kind of frustrated when I post a video that has absolutely nothing to do with my animals and all of the comments are just asking me to do guinea pig or bearded dragon updates. I will do the updates if I feel like it. I personally do not like making pet videos because I get a lot of hate on pet videos. People try to tell me how to take care of my animals when I know how to take care of my animals. So I just don't enjoy making pet videos. They stress me out. They make me sad because people say I abuse my animals when I don't and I'm tired of it. So that's why I don't make pet videos often. So if some of you are only subscribed to me for pet videos, I'm sorry, but that's not the type of videos that I'm gonna make very often. Update videos are kind of hard to make because it's just like, all right, well, here's my animal, they're alive, that's the update. You know, you can't really do much with update videos. So that's why in this video, I'm going to show you me cleaning my bearded dragon enclosure and I will show you some clips of the guinea pigs as well if you'd like. That's pretty much all this is. <laughs> so my bearded dragon, I have, I got him, Oh my gosh, I don't even remember how long ago. So my bearded dragon vlog where I went and got him was May 17th. So about three, three, four months ago, I got Bowser. And at that time he was little, very little, like this big, tiny, um, could barely hold him because he was so small. He might like run out of my arms. And now he's a pretty chonky boy. And if you follow me on my Instagram, I post a lot of pictures and videos of him. So he's gotten pretty big. I am aware that his enclosure is getting a little too small for him. I'm planning on using the money I get for my birthday this month and getting a custom made enclosure for him. If you guys have any recommendations for any websites that make custom made bearded dragon enclosures, so comment down below, but I wanna get him a really big one, like 75 gallon minimum and just really, really go all out. Out with his enclosure so that's what I'm planning on doing in the next month or two I will do a video on that if you guys want to see it but for right now he is in a 40 gallon um, he has um, Zoomed heat bulb he has UVB I'll just show you guys everything and I'll stop talking because I'm sure the only thing you want to see is him and I also want to say a quick disclaimer so I don't get attacked this mess that you see is from like two days of not cleaning his enclosure because I worked all day yesterday so this is just from this morning and yesterday of the mess. He makes a huge mess. He is a messy boy, so yeah. And in this video, I will show me feeding him this really cool uh, hornworm. I went to PetSmart and I got it today. It's just like one big one. There were some smaller ones, but, and I don't know if this one is too big for him, but I think he'll like it. So this is the first time he's ever gonna eat a hornworm. So hopefully he likes it. So I'm just gonna show you me cleaning it and kind of just give you guys some updates on what I've been feeding him and how he's been doing and everything. So let's, do that. All right, well, first of all, here are my guinea pigs. I just cleaned their enclosure, it's cleaning day. So as you can see, there's latte. They have completely chewed up this entire thing. Mocha hides a lot and they've already knocked this over because they suck. <laughs> just kidding, I love them. Um, but yeah, you can see they've gotten pretty big. I haven't weighed them um, in the past week or two, so yeah. Oh, there's Mocha. There he is. So yeah, the guinea pigs are alive. They're not dead. I didn't kill them. All right, so here is Bowser. And as you can see, it is a complete mess. So that is what we were, I'm doing a full deep clean today. So here he is basking on this. This is what he looks like. His nails are getting pretty sharp. I'm gonna try to cut them. I'm not sure if he'll let me, but he's just kind of splooted out onto this. And he really likes laying on the top of that and up here. And recently he's been laying on the cool side a lot more as well. As you can see, I've been using shelf liner and 
toilet paper and that is what I'm going to continue to use when I get a custom made enclosure I'm going to buy some tile from Home Depot and make it a tile enclosure but for right now that's what I use because it's pretty easy to clean so I'm going to get him out and try to show you guys the best I can he hates being held and I hold, ever since I've gotten him, I have held him almost every day for at least 10 to 15 minutes to try to train him to be held. And he's not a fan of it, so it takes me a couple minutes usually to get him out of the enclosure because I don't want to spook him. That's another reason why I want to get a different enclosure so I can open it up from the front and not kind of attack him from the top because I don't really like that at all. Yeah, I'm going to take him out and put him in this little playpen that I have. Um, I know a lot of people just keep him on their shoulder while they're cleaning, but he does not stay still long enough for that, so I'm not even going to pressure him into doing all that. As you can see, he really hates being held and his claws are really sharp, so he's cutting the crap out of my hands right now. But here he is. He is chonky. Usually if I give him a second, he calms down. He's never ever tried to bite me before though. So that's one thing that I really admire about him is that he is really nervous, but he's never tried to bite before. And um, after he calms down, he's pretty chill and calm. And I wanna buy a little leash for him. Here he is. Um, I don't know how much he weighs. I've actually never even weighed him. I really want to cut his nails because like I said, there's probably blood on my hand right now from him just trying to escape me, which I totally understand. And his beard is getting black, so he's irritated. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put him in the little playpen because he's getting irritated with me right now. So yeah, he's in the little playpen and he usually just chills out down there while I do it, so I don't really bother him. But yeah, it's a mess in here. <laughs> this is his food bowl and I just filled it up with greens this morning. He usually eats and then leaves this huge shit in here that I have to clean, which is whatever, but bearded dragon poop is a whole new smell. It's like, I deal with gross smells at work every single day with animals, but reptile poop is a whole nother level of just disgusting. So I literally just take everything out of here. Probably some like loose roaches in here or something that he maybe have missed when he was eating or something like that. Um, that happens sometimes, usually he gets all of them though, so. Oh, by the way guys, I use this pet camera right here and I have it face towards the guinea pigs. So if I'm like not at home or somebody is um, pet sitting my guinea pigs, cause when I go out of town, um, I have somebody come over and take care of the guinea pigs. I can watch them on the pet camera. So that's what that is. I think it's pretty cool. Um, if I can find the link for it, I will put it down below. And holy crap, my palms are bleeding. There's a big roach in there. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm gonna go give it to him. That's usually what I do. I just go and give him the roach if I find any. So I have this pretty nice um, vacuum hand vacuum that I bought on Amazon. I'm gonna use it for my guinea pigs and this enclosure. This is the Black & Decker lith Lithium hand vacuum. I can find the link for it, I'll put it down below. Been using it for a couple months now and it hasn't died out on me and it's taken a lot of poop in here. So I literally just vacuum up all the grossness in here. So then the cleaner I use is the Fluker's Super Scrub Cleaner, Organic Cleaner. Um, it dissolves organic matter and it has natural enzymes, so it is safe for enclosures. It literally has a bearded dragon on it. And it has this cool brush. When I have to clean the enclosure, like spot clean it after he poops, if he poops, he usually poops in his food bowl for me, but if he poops on the shelf liner, I clean up the poop with paper towel the best I can. And then I spray it with this and I scrub it and then clean it with paper towel again and it cleans the area completely. So this little scrubber is really nice. But what I do is I try to scrub the walls um, the best I can. I usually just like squeeze some out if it'll let me. And then I just try to clean the best I can or I'll just use paper towel to clean the outside. But the bottom down here, I literally can just scrub it and it's really nice, so.
So this is the shelf liner I use. Um, as you can see before, I had like that marble one. Um, I get these from the Dollar Tree. They're a dollar each. And yeah, I'm gonna use these gray ones this time. But like I said, for the custom enclosure that I'm gonna make, I'm gonna use tile because then you never really have to replace it. You just kind of scrub them. So that's what I do for the flooring. Um, I kind of layer it, but it has a good grip and it won't hurt his feet. So now what I do is I just go to the kitchen and I just clean all of his stuff with some Reptile Safe Cleaner. Um, scrub it real good because it's got like pee on it and stuff and then just put everything back inside and put them back in there So I'm gonna go to the kitchen real fast and clean these and I will be right back Always remember to put water conditioner in your water. Um, I use the Zoomed Reptisafe and it, you literally just need like a little squirt and it'll dechlorinate the water. All right, and now it's clean. So I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna show you him in the enclosure. Actually, it's a mess in this room. So I'm actually currently renovating this room. This is my like office slash pet room. It's been completely renovated. So the room itself is incredibly messy except for the animal stuff. So I'm not gonna show you my room just cause I'm not trying to get hate for the storage and everything that's in here, but I'm gonna go ahead and get him out and put him back in. I, I need to measure him to see how long he's gotten, but he's huge. All right, I'm gonna put him back in here. All right, so I'm trying to think of any things that have happened in the past couple months that is good for an update. Um, the only thing that I've had happen so far is my heat lamp, my basking heat lamp, this one right here, went out one morning, like randomly, and I only had it for like a month. <laughs> I came in here and it was dead. So I had to go to the pet store and get some more. So I have learned to always have an extra heat lamp because bearded dragons not having heat lamps is not a good thing and we all know this. So I bought an extra basking spot bulb to always have on hand. And I'm also going to buy another UVB thing as well to make sure that I have a backup for the UVB and I'm gonna replace that every six months. I think it's coming up time right now. So I'm going to get another one of those and replace that. That's the only thing that has really happened. Um, he eats roaches, he loves dubia roaches. I keep them in this container right here. I'm running out of them for right now, so there's not too many in here, but I order them from the dubiadude.com. Um, I am breeding mealworms. I don't give him mealworms very often, but for when he gets older, I know he can have more than he can have now, so I'm breeding them. It's working good. There are babies that are being hatched and crawling around in there, so that's pretty cool. He loves wax worms and super worms. I give him super worms frequently. Um, and then wax worms, I give wax worms, make them fat. So he is pretty chonky. I don't know if he's overweight. I hope he's not because I try to feed him, you know, what's recommended online. And then I have been slowly giving him less bugs and more greens than usual because he's getting older. And as they get older, they don't need as much bugs as they need greens. So I'm going to show you guys what I feed him and I'm also gonna feed him that hornworm. Let's go ahead and get that out and feed it to him because I feel like he get he should get a treat for being a good boy. All right, so I don't know if I'm the only one but I don't really mess with bugs. I don't touch bugs with my hands. It's not something that I have ever been a fan of. So I use tongs for literally everything. So this is just a single hornworm. Ew, they stink. Ew, why is it gooey? Holy shit, he ate that in one bite. Okay, I guess he liked it. That's crazy. I'm also gonna give him some wax worms cause he loves them. And then I didn't give him any bugs yesterday because I ran out and I had to go get them today. So I'm kind of compensating from yesterday and giving him a couple more bugs than usual today. Yeah, he loves wax worms. 
Uh, I try to order them online if I can, but if not, I just go to PetSmart or Petco or any pet store. All right, I am going to go get his veggies and show you what I normally feed him for his veggies, and that's what I do every day. Um, I come in in the morning, I give him some greens, clean the area a little bit, then I come back in the afternoon. It's a little bit earlier today, but usually around five or six in the afternoon, his lights turn off at eight. They're on a timer. They come on at 6.30 in the morning. They turn off at eight o'clock at night. Um, I have it. I have it like that because I get up for work at 6.30, so it comes on the same time I get up. So when I give him some food, he has time to kind of like, what the heck? He has time to like eat and everything. All right, for today, he's getting some mustard greens and one raspberry. And once a week, I sprinkle his food with some vitamins. So that is what I'm going to do today. I just sprinkle it. He eats it. He gets the all the nutrients he needs. Um, I used I use the herb divide, multivitamin. Either I sp sprinkle it with multivitamin, calcium, or calcium with no D3. And then I just put that down in there and he eats it whenever he wants it. There he is, basking on his little rock. I don't know if you guys can see, but my hands are like all cut up and they are burning. While I'm here, I also wanted to show you guys how my mealworm breeding is going. So I'm gonna show you guys the beetles. Look at all the beetles I have in here. I have only bought one box of mealworms and I just let them turn into beetles. So I think I've got about 30 beetles in here and they just snack on the veggies, the leftover veggies I have from like cooking in the guinea pigs and stuff. And they just snack on that. And then I also already have some babies in here and you might not be able to see them very well sometimes you can see there you might be able to see right there you see that little thing moving that is a little tiny baby mealworm yeah little little babies in there so once they become big mealworms then i just put them back in here and either feed them to bowser i don't know where the heck this came from um feed it back to bowser or let them turn into beetles again but i don't really want more beetles. I think I have plenty. So that's how that's going. I just feed them these oats and some veggies. So it's working really good. And like I said, my roaches are in here and my wax worms are in my little mini fridge. So I am going to go ahead and in this video here, I hope this is what you wanted and what you were asking for. Still don't really know if this is what you want, but it was fun to film it, I guess. It's the first time I filmed me cleaning anything. I will be doing a huge update on the guinea pigs if you want me to as well. I can show you how I clean their enclosure every week and just give you updates on them if you'd like that. So just comment down below. But all I ask for you guys is if you want animal videos, comment on my animal videos asking for another update because having videos I work really hard on and all the comments being not about the video is kind of frustrating. So if you guys could just comment on this video and let me know. I also post tons of videos of my animals on my Instagram. So my Instagram is down below. If you guys want to follow it, I post videos and pictures of my animals more than myself on Instagram. So check that out down below, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time. Bye!